What's up? Neverwinter fools! New video, let's go. You can already tell what it's going to be about based on the title. But allow me to tell you a short story first. <clears throat> when I was a teenager, I often thought to myself how wonderful it would be to have a job that goes hand in hand with my favorite hobby of all time, video games. It was not a good idea. Think about magic you see on TV. It can be amazing the first time you see it until your curiosity gets the better of you and you start searching the internet on how exactly the trick was done. Doing so would ruin the entertainment value of magic shows. That's how I feel about becoming a game developer. Working with a bunch of uninteresting combinations of numbers and characters would inevitably devalue the joy of playing video games. Ah, uh, cool story, bro. I'm sure many of you, at some point, have wished that you had the power to make changes to the game you were playing to your own liking. Remove those, buff this, nerf that. Well, I too have those kind of wishes. But instead of brown nosing the actual developers by providing my idea and feedback, hoping that Senpai would notice me, I make this video for my own sake. Now, before I present my ideas, I have a sponsor! Really? Who? These... No! Don't you dare! Okay, okay, I won't say it. Nuts! Ha! 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 Sumi. You done goofed? You're already dead. What? Seriously though, like I said many times before, I don't make videos for money or fame or whatever it was I forgot. Sorry for the long intro guys. Let's begin for real this time. Yo yo yo, I got this. What is this about? Who? Me? What? Class balance for ranger. When? Right meow. Where? YouTube. Why? I'm bored. How? Imagination. Life is your creation. Quit messing around. I'll do it. But first. <sighs> Here we go again. I have a question. What are you guys doing here? There are millions of videos to watch, and yet you are wasting your time on mine. If you make it this far, stop and go watch something else more entertaining, like a cat video or something. No? It's gonna be boring from this point on, especially if you don't know this class, or worse, don't play this game anymore. Still here? Alrighty then. Don't say I didn't warn ya. Main objective. Rebalance the ranger by buffing archery on hunter and combat on warden while trying to equalize the essence of trapper between the two. Outstanding problem. Most powers were designed with little to no consideration for technical stuff such as cast time, cast delay, range, and radius. Hypothetical assumption. All obvious bugs such as seismic shot pushing instead of pulling, cordon of arrows not being able to crit, biting snares modifying thorn roots duration, etc. are fixed. Key considerations. Simplicity. Focus on keeping the changes plain, natural, and easy to understand. Affordability. The cost in time, money, and manpower to implement the changes. Viability. How likely it is for the changes to be successful and continue to remain so in the future. Applicability. The quality of being relevant or appropriate. Stick to the class theme and the game's lore. 
For reference, let's take a look at this official class balance for Hunter Ranger back in 2016. No, no, this is not a continuation from my previous video, just a coincidence. Pay attention to this bar graph here. Long Strider Shot wasn't very popular until some little halfling ranger made videos about it. Fox Cunning was popular because of cooldown reduction. Other than those two encounters, look at how this graph from over 8 years ago is still more or less relevant to this day. So many weak and unused powers. Come on, man. Come on, Come man. On. Wasn't it nice to have a developer like MNR here that cared this much about class balance? Now, let's take a look at Hunter Ranger stuff before Mod 16. I will come back to this page for reference many times going forward. Why bother trying to make up new things when you can just recycle? Remember history and learn from it. Alright, let's start with the Hunter from top to bottom. Before Mod 16, Atwills in general dealt more damage the further you go through the combo. Currently, every hit has the same magnitude regardless of how long the cast time is, and that makes no sense to me. The cast times of each rapid shot in a single combo are as follows. To compensate for the long cast time of the final hit, I'm adding a 5% recharge speed buff. By increasing the magnitude to 110, the magnitude per second or NPS becomes 220. For a comparison, aim shot's NPS is 260. Similar issue with rapid strike. The cast time of the last hit is way too long with no incentive. To compensate for that, the final strike of the combo now deals double damage. Magnitude increases to 60, MPS becomes 214. Split Shot Cast time is reduced to 1.6 seconds to make this at will faster to fully charge. Additionally, it can now aim freely without requiring a target to use. Split Strike Magnitude increases to 70. Added Effect Gain 2% stamina for each enemy hit. Split Strike used to do something like this in the past via artifact weapon modification. Aim Shot is fine where it is, no change. Aim Strike Magnitude increases to 240 for the bleed. Duration is reduced to 8 seconds. This way, Aim strike is better to use in melee, but not to the point of spamming it due to bleed not stacking. Hunter's teamwork. Magnitude increases to 130. Added effect. Decrease outgoing damage from target by 2%. Duration decreases to 15 seconds, down from 20. This power used to debuff outgoing damage. I'm just giving a piece of it back. Careful attack. This power doesn't generate AP at all. And due to affordability, I am removing the damage entirely. In exchange, this at will now becomes a personal debuff. Added effect, target takes 5% more damage from your powers, which are at wills, encounters, and dailies. It's kinda like worry. Duration increases to 15 seconds, up from 10. Hindering Shot Magnitude increases to 150 For Hindering Strike Honestly, this encounter is way too strong for what it does Strong Grasping Roots, Low Cast Time and Delay Short Cooldown and High Magnitude for an AoE power For these reasons, I am decreasing its magnitude to 460 Marauder's Escape Magnitude increases to 610. Cast time decreases to 1 second. To live up to its name, the ranger is immune to control effects while using its power. Also, the character remains stationary if used in mid-air. 
Marauder's Rush. Magnitude increases to 640. Constricting Arrow. This power is fine where it is. No change. Steel Breeze. Magnitude increases to 245. Cooldown increases to 15 seconds, up from 14. This power restores too much stamina, and the ranger no longer has a slow stamina regeneration rate like it did in the past. For these reasons, I'm decreasing the stamina gain rate by half. Brain of Arrows Magnitude increases to 510. Because this power requires the targets to remain in the circle for a total of 6 seconds to deal its full damage, it deserves to have a high magnitude. Reign of Swords Having two different ranges is kinda weird, so I'm changing the range to a radius with a value of 25 feet. This means the slam attack now hits enemies around the ranger. Magnitude increases to 190 and 340 for damage over time. Cooldown increases to 15 seconds, up from 14. Cordon of Arrows. Magnitude increases to 275. Remove charges. Cooldown decreases to 18 seconds, down from 20. Additionally, I'm giving back what this power used to have, the pull effect. Plan Growth. Magnitude increases to 245 and 200 for damage over time. Cooldown decreases to 20 seconds, down from 25. Ambush. To make this encounter truly viable, I'm bumping the magnitude to 500. However, it decreases as the number of targets increases to a minimum of 100. In addition, the ranger has combat advantage when attacking from stealth, the same way rogues do. Bear Trap They call this thing massive? <laughs> Magnitude decreases to 150 for damage over time. Radius double to 8 feet. Remove hold effect. Added effect. Strong grasping roots. Okay, so this next encounter pair is already strong by itself. But here is how I would change it. Long Strider Shot. Magnitude increases to 700. Cooldown increases to 15 seconds, up from 14. Added Effect. Movement Speed increases by 10%. Duration, 5 seconds. In D&D, Long Strider is associated with speed. Gushing Womb. Magnitude increases to 430 and decreases to 320 for dot. Duration decreases to 8 seconds. Cooldown decreases to 15 seconds, down from 16. This way, Long Strider Shot is a bit stronger for archery, and Gushing Wound is slightly better for burst damage. The combined magnitude from both encounters stay the same. Hawk Shot this power needs a lot of help, so the magnitude is going to be triple to 825. The radius is pathetically small, so I'm removing it entirely. Turn this encounter into a single target. Cast time decreases to 1.2 seconds, down from 1.5. Hawk Eye. Encounter damage buff increases to 8%, 4% for allies. Cooldown increases to 20 seconds, up from 18. Commanding Shot This encounter is already good except the cast time, so I'm changing it to be the same as Hawk Shot. 1.2 seconds, down from 1.4. Stack Heart To eliminate the conflict with barriers, the blue HP shield, I'm changing the temporary HP back to yellow to make this buff more unique. In exchange, the value is reduced to 10% for self and 5% for allies. Rapid Volley 5 charges is a bit too many, 
and will become too powerful when combined with my Paragon Speed changes that are coming up. So I'm changing it to 3. Magnitude increases to 150. Wind Walk Strike. Remove Charges. Magnitude increases to 340. Added Effect. Weak Grasping Roots. Forest Ghost. Remove 5% AP upfront cost to prevent on daily use prox abuse. Magnitude increases to 175. Forest Ghost can only hit 4 times, so the total magnitude is 700. To make this daily a lot more useful, I'm going to apply the same logic I did with Ambush, which is having combat advantage while in stealth. Seismic Shot Magnitude increases to 915. Remove Pool and add Prone Effect, because it makes more sense to me. When something powerful is traveling underneath the ground you're standing on, you tend to lose your balance and fall down from the intense vibration. Snipe This daily has no synergy with anything. To compensate for that and the long cast time, magnitude increases to 2200. Slasher's mark This one is fine where it is. No change. Disruptive shot Increase the magnitude to 450 and bring back the CC effect. Apply effect. Days. Duration. 3 seconds. Aspect of the pack. Increase target cap to 10. Aspect of the serpent. To bring back what this class feature used to have access to, I'm giving it 2% crit chance per stack. Aspect of the falcon. Remove the unnecessary 25 feet condition. The most appropriate stat to go with this animal is accuracy. So that's what it's going to be. Increases your accuracy by 5%. Path Finder's action. To make this class feature more useful for DPS, it will now also increase your recharge speed by 10%. Crew Recovery. This one is very bad. Hmm. Offensive recovery. The only thing that comes to my mind is AP. Yeah, that's it. 5% HP heal and 4% AP every 2 seconds should be good enough. Primal Instincts. Remember when this class feature used to be battle honed? It was the worst. Buff effectiveness increases to 30%. In addition, reduces the cooldown of Hog Eye and Stack Heart by 4 seconds. This would bring the cooldown of both powers down to 16 seconds, so the Ranger can buff practically every rotation. I don't like what it did to Long Shot, so I'm going to change the name and the icon to something more suitable. As for the feat itself, the easiest thing to rebalance is against rate of change is to make it work with at wills. Because I have already buffed a bunch of range powers, the bonus as well as the penalty will be lowered to compensate. The new name, Archery Mastery, is taken from D&D 4th edition. You know, the same edition this game was originally based on. Rate of Change This one is fine where it is. No change. Keep breaking that tab button or whatever it is on console. Here we are at the biggest part of rebalancing the ranger, my way. Critical action is simply too weak compared to thorn roots. We need something way better. And this is where I bring back long shot from history with some adjustments. Critical range attacks deal additional 40 magnitude this bonus is triple for encounter powers. Yes, this feat can make rapid shot better than aim shot. Sometimes. For thorn roots, one of the most defining features of Trapper now creates a big problem for balancing encounters with strong grasping roots attached to them. What I would do is 1. Increase the magnitude of the damage over time by 15. 
strong grasping root space duration is 3 seconds, so this buff amounts to 4592 buff. 2. Reduce the immediate damage against control immune targets by 50 magnitude. 3. Relocate. I repeat, relocate the second part of Thorn Roots class mechanic. This would make my new long shot more competitive, and the Warden Paragon gets to enjoy this extra source of damage. 4. Add damage to control immune targets when applying weak grasping roots, and set the magnitude to 85. Currently, this feature already exists as a hidden bug, and the magnitude is about 80. I'm buffing it by 5 to even out the changes I made in number 1 and 2. So, the Ranger's Grasping Roots mechanic would look something like this. Biting Snares This thing used to do a lot more than just giving AP. First, I'm doubling the AP bonus to 2%. Second, bring back Trapper's Cunning and lower the proc chance to balance it out. This would put the bite into the biting snares. Predator Clarify in the tooltip that this damage buff only works with encounter powers, then make it reapplyable at all times. That's not a real word, but you know what I mean. Forest Bond This feat is already very good, no change. Next is... Commander in Chief Ugh. I cringed when I first saw this. So, I'm going to remove this crap and replace it with something that can actually compete with Forest Bond in terms of cooldown reduction. Will combat unflinching aim and bottomless quiver combined into one with some minor adjustment for balance. Additionally, as a quality of life buff, this feat allows the ranger to move while using aim shot. More than disruptive, add 100 magnitude to the daily to make it better for sustained DPS. Slasher's Mark and Snipe are still better for burst damage with Artifact Call, just not as much. Slasher's Expertise, this feat is okay, no change. For general feats, I would combine Weapon Mastery with Lucky Skirmisher and double the bonuses. So, Lucky Skirmisher would be 5% Deflect and 5% Crit Chance. Stance Mastery, no change. It's not great, nor terrible. To replace the missing slot for Weapon Mastery, I bring back Extra Action, 5% AP Gain Rate. That's it for Hunter. <laughs> Need a break? Well. Here's a random cat picture. Moving on to Warden. Keep in mind the changes I made to the Ranger's base kit. Powers with magical damage will have slightly higher magnitude compared to similar powers that are physical. I want both Paragons to focus on physical damage so they share similar artifact gears. The difference between whether or not a damage type is being boosted by an ability score, strength, or intelligence is around 6%. Electric Shot Notice the cast times. That's right, 2.4 seconds to complete the combo. Oof. Magnitude increases to 80. MPS is 100. Clear the ground. Magnitude increases to 55. To add a little flavor to this at will, I'm giving it 5% deflect for 5 seconds on the final hit, because deflect goes with spinning. This change would make this at will competitive with split strike for AoE. Penetrating arrows. Magnitude increases to 95. Storm Strike Despite copying the animation of the first two hits of Rapid Strike, Storm Strike's animation looks and feels clunky, 
so I am reducing the cast times to 0.5 seconds for the first two hits. Magnitude increases to 120. Split the sky. Magnitude decreases to 130. Can hit up to 10 targets closest to the center of the AoE once every 2 seconds. Total magnitude thus becomes 650 due to the long cast time and duration to deal full damage. The high magnitude for this AoE is justified. It was an iconic encounter for Storm Warden. Gotta make it great again. Throw caution. Magnitude increases to 420. Change the 10,000 defense debuff to increase damage taken by 5%. Cooldown decreases to 10 seconds, down from 12. Or hide. Because defense buff is mostly wasted on tanks, I'm changing this to damage reduction. 3% damage reduction per stack. Maximum stack decreases to 4, and cooldown decreases to 18 seconds, down from 20. The buff duration is not shown, but it is currently 1 minute. I am changing it to 10 seconds, to make this buff more tactical to use. Bore Charge Attack range increases to 40 feet. For comparison, Fighter's Bull Charge has a range of 60 feet. Magnitude increases to 685. Cooldown decreases to 15 seconds, down from 16. Fox Cunning Due to the changes I made to Boar Hide, this one needs to change as well. To me, a buff that makes the most sense with respect to this animal should be 5% movement speed, 15% deflect, and 15% deflect severity. Cooldown decreases to 20 seconds, down from 22. Fox Shift I am changing the targeting system back to reticle. Range increases to 25 feet. Maximum number of hits decreases to 2 when hitting more than one target. Total magnitude increases to 660. Cooldown decreases to 16 seconds, down from 18. Binding Arrow Magnitude decreases to 585. Change weak grasping roots back to strong grasping roots. Cooldown decreases to 16 seconds, down from 18. Oak Skin Increase the healing to 16%. This value is halved for allies. Duration decreases to 8 seconds. Thorn Ward Cooldown decreases to 20 seconds down from 22. Thorn Strike Magnitude increases to 395. For an attack that spawns a bunch of thorns, you should also apply some Grasping Roots. Added Effect Weak Grasping Roots Cooldown increases to 10 seconds, up from 8. Cold Steel Hurricane To make this daily easier to use for DPS, I am decreasing the entity's movement speed by half. Magnitude increases to 850. Slow duration increases to 6 seconds. Call of the Storm Looking at the animation of this daily, I feel like it should do a little more after summoning a lightning bolt like that. Added effect Days Duration 3 seconds Also, I am reducing the internal cooldown of the lightning enchanted weapon to 0.5 seconds so fast at wills can benefit more from this buff. Storm Step Action Flat cooldown reduction is a bit redundant now that we have Tactician's Precision, so I am changing this to Percentage with a maximum value of 25%. Also, it now increases movement speed by 5% at all times. Blade Storm this feature is so weak, I'm doubling the numbers to 40% chance and 20% additional damage. Twin Blade Storm This one is okay, but it could be a bit better. Decrease the number of minimum target required to 2. Aspect of the Lone Wolf To live up to the notion of being a lone wolf, I am changing it to 5% damage, 5% movement speed, and reduce damage taken by 5% for 
when there are no party members nearby. Fogus needs a better opponent, and to do that, I am removing Death Strikes and replace it with a feed combat HR used to have. Scything Blades, with some minor adjustments. Focused. Small quality of life change. Increasing the buff per stack to 2.5%. Now the warden can reach full stacks in 8 seconds instead of 10. Storm's recovery. This feat is a bit too strong, and because I've lowered the cooldown of many encounters already, cooldown reduction now decreases to 2.5 seconds. Swiftness of the Fox. I find this feat too similar to Storm's recovery, so I'm replacing it with something more unique from the past. Serpent Weave, which will now recharge encounter power cooldown by 1.5 seconds when shifting, can only happen once every 2 seconds. Blade Hurricane, even though this feat is already strong, here is how I would change it. One. Allow Flurry to be refreshable. That's an obvious one that many people want. 2. Allow Flurry to also work with range at wills for archery wilderness enjoyers out there. Flurry can still only proc for melee encounters, however, to keep it balanced. 3. Due to the changes in number 2, I am renaming this feat to 2 Weapon Flurry. And yes, this name exists in D&D. So I'm not just making it up. Storm Conduit. This feat is so bad that I can't be bothered to waste my time reworking it. Instead, I'm bringing back what many people forget the combat HR used to have. It is Piercing Blade. After all, I need a truly formidable option to compete with Flurry. Piercing damage may not benefit from defense and damage resistant debuff, but Piercing Blade should be able to compensate for that with its high sustained DPS. Skirmisher's Gambit Critical severity now increases to 15%. Remember that I increased the critical chance by 2.5% in Lucky Skirmisher, so this trade-off is even better. Okay, so this next feat is kind of a waste of space, so I'm going to throw it to the wind, just like the name. In its place, I'm bringing back Lucky Blades, because it makes a better comparison. Risk from Gambit versus Luck. Enhanced Conductivity. A small buff for this one. Call of the Storm deals additional 120 magnitude. Alright, last one. Since I've already changed Flurry to work with range at wills, Nature's Envoy will now add 125 magnitude to Forest Ghost. I'm decreasing the AP cost of this daily to 25%. Combining with my previous buff to this daily, Forest Ghost will deal up to 1200 magnitude. Comparing to my new Call of the Storm, which can deal up to 2350 magnitude, assuming that the Lightning Enchanted weapon is proc every half a second. And that's all of them. That took longer than I thought. Next, I'll show a quick comparison between the main at wills after my idea of rebalance. Pause the video if you want to take a look. But basically, I want the ranger to have a much better option of choosing which arrow to use depending on the situation. Hang on, you're still here? My goodness, I think you're underestimating the value of time here. Oh well, I'm done with this video. But remember, this is just my hopes and dreams that will most likely never happen. So if you don't like them, or have a better idea, well, first of all, I'm not a developer. Tell him. And second, boom, bam, bop, bada bop, boom, pow. See you later.